What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls. Later on today's episode, we're going to be going over a poll that I posted a couple of days ago. And what did you guys rank the Bulls' overall season this past season? We'll also be talking about some memories, some fond memories of Derrick Rose in remembrance of his 11 years ago winning the MVP. We'll also be getting into our first player breakdown for the season. And this one's going to be an unsuspected one to start, but one that I did just wanted to start with because I figured it was a it's a nice little palate cleanser to talk about this player season. Uh, and that's Javante Green. Talk about Javante Green season. Um, yeah, so we'll get into all that and more right after our intro. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So it's been an interesting couple of days in the fact that there's been no news. No news at all going on with the Chicago Bulls. Scottie Pippen's tripping um, <laughs> with, with doing more things. And we talked about that over on Locked on Bulls. So I'm just not going to repeat that there. But one of the things that I did leave you guys off on uh, in, in, the, in the last video or so um, was asking what grade did we give the Chicago Bulls season? And this was, this was posted um, on the community tab for anyone who's listening on the podcast side. Um, and we got some interesting, it was, it was a, a pretty nice, nice spread on this one. So we're going to first talk about that. The, uh, in the question in the poll that I asked and posted is what grade would you give the Chicago Bulls 2021-22 season? 6% gave it an A. 63%, which is the overwhelming majority, gave it a B. Uh, 26% gave, gave it a D. 3%, I'm sorry, six, uh, 26% gave it a C. 3% gave it a D. And only 1% graded it an F. That's out of Almost 2,000 votes. Um, so you do the math on that one because I'm not doing the math on which, which each of those percentages mean. But what that means is that most Bulls fans, at least that follow Chicago Bulls Central, rated the Bulls season a B. And I think that that's pretty fair. I know that you have some Bulls fans, and I did read some of the comments of saying, A, they failed this season. They, they, they're losers. They gave up, things like that. I really don't see it that way. When you look at the injuries, when you look at the fact of how many players that we had playing hobbled, at the, at the end of the season, I really don't look at the Bulls giving it up. That B, I expected it, I honestly expected it to be more around the C plus C area just because of how the playoffs went, the end of the season went. But it being a B says to me that, you know, more Bulls fans than not really did think that this season and, you know, are being realistic in what the season was. This season, yes, it ended terrible, right? Let's not take away from that. But this season is being a foundational season to really kind of set that foundation of being a playoff team, that's always what it was meant to be and something to build off on to improve the bench in, in the offseason, things that we all hope that this team's going to do. All the proof's there in the pudding. You know, we're going to trust us, AK and Eversley. So the solid overall B that uh, mo most uh, fans on this on this channel and this uh, podcast gave that. Um, yeah, I still want to hear from you guys. If you agree, disagree, the poll's still going to be up. You can still vote if you do have different feelings on it at all with that. I don't know if it's going to be as, as many votes as to swing anything or change the percentages, but you can still leave a comment if you want to. Um, one thing, the next thing that we're going to go into is that yesterday marked the 11th anniversary, the 11 year anniversary of Derrick Rose winning the MVP. And I know so much, so many of us remember that 2010, 2011 season so fondly and just what it meant for Chicago to be back, number one team in the East. Um, you know, even though the playoffs even then ended, you know, frustratingly for the Chicago Bulls, but Derrick Rose winning the MVP season, his statement and, 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 and things of why it can't be him then to go out there and prove it, that was just a great season. You know, I shared one of my personal memories on, on Locked on Bulls when we talked about it today as well, is that that was one, really my first season um, where the, the watching the Chicago Bulls with my son, who was five at the time, Watching so many games that season. I, and, you know, later on, we went to some games after the fact. And, you know, after, it was after Derrick Rose's ACL injury and everything like that. But it's we, it, I think as, as collectively as a fan base, we remember that season just amazingly. What it meant for Derrick Rose, the kid from Chicago, the, the kid we had a 1.8% chance of even getting a chance to draft. And we get, we get him. And, you know, yeah, it sucks. We never got to see a true Derrick Rose in his prime. We never got to see what that would have been like. The Bulls team was even improved the year after that and what they could have done. That was robbed from us because of Derrick Rose tearing his ACL, all those things. But, you know, shout out to Derrick Rose for the memory. Shout out for what he meant for the city of Chicago and still continues to mean for the city of Chicago and what 
and how I think sometimes we forget that, and it wasn't just Derrick Rose, but the era of like Chris Paul, Deron Williams, uh, Derrick Rose, um, Russell Westbrook, and John Wall coming in, and what that really meant for the ball dominant scoring point guard, and how that really changed to what we're seeing nowadays. Derrick Rose is really, he deserves so much attention for that. And, you know, just shout out to Derrick Rose for what it meant. Like I said, what he means to the city of Chicago. And that season overall is going to go down as one of the greatest single seasons in Chicago Bull history. And only the second uh, Chicago Bulls player other than Michael Jordan to win the MVP. And that's well deserved from Derrick Rose and all the memories there. Let's go ahead, get into the next topic that I have for you guys today. The last topic that I have for you guys today, actually, we're going to be starting player profiles. So I'm going to be talking about uh, certain Bulls player seasons. I will say the Matt Thomas, the the Troy Brown Juniors, um, I probably will lop them all in together just because there's, there's nothing to happen of note. Uh, the, the Malcolm Hills, I don't even know if I'll, if I'll rank his season. The Tyler Cook, he didn't give us much. But I wanted to start this one off with Javante Green. And the reason why I wanted to start it off with Javante Green is just because what he did this season, and I think sometimes it goes understated. Yes, at times he was overworked just because of height. And, you know, some, sometimes as much energy as he did give, you couldn't really overcome the height discrepancy that he was up against in, in a lot of games and in a lot of situations. But Javante Green, the heart, the determination, the defense, the energy, the grit that he played with at times, the, the, like the determination, if I didn't say that already, um, and the fact that he gave us almost every game damn near gave us close to, most of the times it rimmed out, but a highlight reel dunk. Um, Javante Green season for me um, was one that it was eye opening because I don't think any of us really had Javante Green pegged to 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 become the starting power forward, especially it, even if Patrick Williams went down. I think most of us would have thought that Derrick Jones Jr. would have probably been that. Um, if anyone over um over it ended up being Javante Green, but what he gave, what he was able to give the Bulls defensively, at many times him Lonzo Ball were the defensive identity for the Chicago Bulls team, especially in the starting lineup for so, for so long of the season. Yes, he had issues at times with hitting open shots, uh, especially down the stretch of the season, as this whole team did. Yes, as I said, you know, being realistic, there was times where he was just outworked. He just didn't have the height to compete at the position that the Bulls were playing him at. Keep in mind, completely playing him outside at the, at the power forward, when realistically he should be playing more 2-3. What grade would I give Javante Green seed? Trying to be, trying not to get caught up in just like, like I said, the, the intangibles and things like that. But I think you got to give it a solid C plus up until a B minus because of just how long, for how many games that he held down the Chicago Bulls as the starting power forward that no one would have had, had him pegged in to be. When we got Javante Green, he was kind of the throw in piece of that trade. Daniel Tice left, Javante Green was still here, and he really opened up a lot of players' eyes this season. Some Bulls fans, I know with the way that the playoffs went, the way that he played down the stretch when he did move to the bench, some Bulls fans have turned on Javante Green. I have not. As much as I do think that this Bulls bench is going to be drastically improved, I would love to see Javante Green stay on this team and possibly get a chance to play more in, more at his natural position and what that could mean for Javante Green coming off the bench. Now, we're guard heavy. We know that. He's probably always going to It's probably going to be more three, even if you can move him out of playing the backup four. But I just, Javante Green's season to me um, was just one that I have more positive memories than negative memories of just because of how surprised I personally was at what he was able to do playing the power forward position. But I want to hear from you guys on this. What did you think of Javante Green's season? What grade would you give Javante Green over the course of this season? I'll probably put it up as a poll as well. I want to hear from you guys on this one. And also, as a little wrinkle to throw in this, do you want to see Javante Green? If, if, do you want to see Javante Green being one of those players that comes back to the Chicago Bulls next season? Do you want to see him still be on the bench? Do you think that he can still contribute to an improved bench? I know we want to see more shooters. I know we want to see some, some uh, of course, better big man uh, rotation from the Chicago Bulls with that coming off the bench as well. But do you think that Javante Green could still have a role on this team if the, if the bench drastically improves? I want to hear from you guys on this one big time. Um, so let me know about that down below. Now, some of the things also that I want to go over before we go for today. Mailbags going to be coming. So make sure you get those mailbags in, whether it's voicemail, text, email, whether you're a listener or a viewer on YouTube. Regardless, I want, I want you guys to get that in. 
But also, we're going to start looking at, um, as we, we're going to do the player profiles thing. That's probably going to last us a week, if not more. Um, and then we're going to start getting into some of the potential offseason targets for the Chicago Bulls, some of the potential draft targets for the Chicago Bulls. If there's somebody specifically that you would like me to take a look at to do a, a specific profile at, leave it in the comments down below as that as well. Or you can leave it in a voicemail or you can leave it in an email. You can do all that because as we go into the offseason content for this, um, I know I'd said and people had asked, how, many, how often are you going to be dropping in the offseason? I always said it probably about three to four videos a week. But with the interaction, with your guys' voicemails, with you guys bringing up things, we can easily do more. We will be doing some random live streams as well. I'll probably honestly be doing a random live stream tomorrow evening. So make sure you're subscribed. You also hit that bell notification because with the way that the summer schedule is working, I don't know how often I'll be able to announce ahead of time when I'm going to be going live. Of course, unless it's the draft, going live for the draft going live for the start of free agency, going live after the draft, things like that. Those things are going to happen regardless. But for the random live streams, you want to make sure that you clicked on, get that notification bell if you're a subscriber on YouTube. Also, for the podcast listeners, I don't always post the live streams as the audio version, so you make sure you want to go over to the YouTube as well if you want to be privy and see some of that content. But that is it for me for today, guys. I love you guys so much. Um, I, I appreciate the, the patience as, you know, the videos have not been coming as consistent because there just hasn't been as much news. But be on the lookout. Thank you for supporting the channel. Make sure you're following the podcast at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text or voicemail, the number to do that is 773-270-2799. I am out like I like to end everything on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. Media. Media.